Have you ever played a game or experienced a story that just really stuck with you days after consuming it? I ask this because recently, like the past day or so, I had the absolute pleasure of completing The Witcher 3 in its two DLCs, Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. Now, this wasn't my first foray into the world of Geralt of Rivia. I've actually been following the Witcher series since the first game came out about eight years or so ago, and my most recent playthrough of The Witcher 3 was actually a second playthrough. I had beaten the core game when it first came out, but I loved the base story so much that I couldn't bring myself to play anything but a continuation of that story, and after four months of sitting on my hands with blood and wine, I read the reviews and decided to give it a playthrough, this time from scratch with a brand new character. It took me almost a month to get through all the content, but man, it was worth it. The game really stuck with me, and my experience with it was so good that I really just wanted to talk about it with you guys in this video. Hopefully you've played through it yourself and can relate to some of the things I'll talk about, but if you haven't, there's something here for you as well. Before we go any further though, I do want to warn you that there probably will be major spoilers, so click off now if you plan to play through this game yourself. Alrighty, so for those of you unfamiliar, The Witcher 3 is the, you guessed it, third entry in The Witcher series, and most players, including myself, would argue that while the other Witcher games are fantastic, this one really takes the cake. It's the first Witcher game in the saga to feature an open, living world, whereas the previous titles were fairly linear in level design. Now, a lot of times, a huge open world can mean lots of empty rolling fields with nothing to see or do. Fantastically enough, though, CD Projekt Red, the game's developer, made every effort to create a world chock full of points of interest. I mean, so many times I'd be on my way to finish a quest or something, and along the way I'd find ten things to do that looked interesting, and before I knew it, I'd have forgotten all about the previous errand I was running. Now, I know this is a pretty common characteristic of games like this, and hell, I did the same thing in Fallout and Skyrim, another two games with massive open worlds, but there's just something about The Witcher that made everything feel like a little adventure, and I think one of the biggest contributing factors to this is the way that Geralt reacts to places sometimes. For example, there's a cave you can happen across in the Kaer Morhen area of the game that isn't a part of any main quest, but upon entering it, you learn from Geralt's inner monologue that the cave is actually an abandoned Witcher laboratory used to put children through the trial of grasses, which is a massively traumatic process that turns boys into witchers. It was little things like this that kept me exploring anything I'd come across. I was always waiting to see what insight Geralt had to share with me. The world in this game is so rich that even though there is a fast travel mechanic, I wouldn't always use it. If I had a long stretch of distance from one objective to the other, I'd often just hoof it and see what I found along the way. Another thing that really stuck with me was the choices you can make in the game. Pretty much any decision you make has an impact on the world you're playing in. Now believe me, I know that's nothing new. Plenty of story-driven RPGs have been doing this for ages. I mean, look at Mass Effect. But my point here is that the characters were so well written, and oftentimes the choices are so hard to make that it really drew you in and made you care about the things you were doing. I really liked how true to life everything was in this game. And what I mean by that is there was almost never a black and white solution to something. It was hardly ever a good guy lives, bad guy dies scenario. A lot of times, in fact, it felt like I was choosing the lesser of two evils. The game really made you think critically before choosing an action. You had to decide what choice you could live with, and if you were prepared to endure the consequences of that action. For example, I remember a quest I was on where a soldier wanted you to find out what was happening to his garrison's supply shipments. The common belief this soldier had was that a monster was attacking the supply caravans and they need you, a witcher, to go hunt it down and put a stop to it. Well, come to find out, the caravans weren't being attacked by a monster at all, but rather a band of elves trying to further their own cause. You have the chance to meet with the elven band's leader, and there you can decide to kill them off, thus stopping the attacks, or let them live and continue murdering caravan drivers for the supplies of this nearby community needed to survive. There wasn't an easy choice here. No matter what I chose, someone would die. In the end, I decided to kill off the elven band because to me, they were no better than common bandits. Upon returning to the garrison commander to report my findings, I thought I'd take my reward and go, but this commander took it upon himself to hang every 10th elven member of the community to make an example. The fascinating thing, and what really drew me in, is that there really wasn't any way I could have known how that scenario would play out, and unless I wanted to reload my save and try another way, I had to live with the consequences of my actions. Which brings me to another point. I love this game so much because it could do what so few games can do for me nowadays. It surprised me. Now, I know that sounds really jaded, but come on, I've been playing video games for over two decades, and I'm sure some of you have as well, if not longer. 
I thought by this point that I had seen everything a game could offer. Man, was I wrong. I would sit in my computer chair for eight hours at a time playing this game because I couldn't wait to see what crazy thing it would throw at me next. Mystery is intoxicating, and it's made even more so when you really care about the world that you're playing in. In all, I've gotta say that I absolutely cherished every second of the over 200 hours I put into this game. The music, the adventure, the characters that felt like family, the combat, the twists and turns in the story, it was a magical experience and I'm deeply saddened by the fact that I'll only ever get to experience it for the first time once. It's almost like I wish I could get amnesia and forget the entire game just to replay it all over again for the first time. Have you ever felt like that about a game or movie or any other experience that you've had? It's a crazy feeling and it's made even more so by knowing that Blood and Wine was Geralt's final adventure. Anyway, that's going to do it for me today here folks as I talk a little bit about my experience with The Witcher 3 and all of its DLC. I'm really curious to know what your guys' playthrough was like and if maybe you felt the same way I do. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to support it with a like down below. It helps out a ton. Additionally, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here. I put out new gaming content daily, so there's always something to talk about around here. Until next time, though, I'm Bows Phoenix. I'll see you at the next video, and as always, thank you so much for watching.